What's up, y'all? <sighs> what's up, what's up, what's up, y'all? Uh, welcome to my AEW Dynamite Review, the Homecoming Edition, live from Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. Basically, AEW home base. But before I actually um, get into this review, I obviously want to talk a little bit about the whole Twitter tirade yesterday. Because you know what? I could have made a separate video yesterday, but I didn't have time. So I'm just going to get my quick thoughts on it uh, real quick. One... Uh, Tony Khan, man, he, wow, this dude is losing his mind every time I see it. Not a lot of good stuff going on for AEW right now, I should say, from a bad pay-per-view to alleged allegations, which we don't know is true or not yet, or, um, you know, Tony on Twitter getting mad at USA Network over, uh, Cage Match Seats, since he takes that seriously, that website, whatever, cagematch.com or something, or Battling Gender, who the fuck is Hook? Or, I don't know, Bischoff, or, um, you know, the man went to war with everybody yesterday. Uh, Jonathan Coachman even had to get involved. I just, I, mostly what I have to say is this. Tony is an idiot when it comes to the internet. It's like everybody says, the man is a mark, okay? And let's remember, this is the owner of a company doing this, okay? Why would the owner of a, this guy should be more worried about, a, you know, making the actual show better than, you know, arguing with USA Network Online because we're arguing about uh, records now and wins and losses between Jinder Mahal and Seth Rollins and whatnot. And that's more of a WWE thing, so I'm not going to go into it that much. Listen, I think that match doesn't make sense as it is anyways with Jinder and Seth for the world title, which we haven't, we barely even seen Jinder on TV, which is true. Like, we really haven't, and now all of a sudden you get the title shot. But in Tony's case, it's like, dude, you let these people sweat you that much to get online and start going back and forth with them? Like, really, really think about that. And then you want to go against Bischoff, and you damn near got owned by Bischoff. Like, say what you want about Eric Bischoff uh, and a lot of stuff he says. But one thing that can be said is like, yeah, he did go against Vince McMahon. And they actually beat the WWE at one point, okay? WCW actually did draw ratings and go over a million-something views, uh, given National Wrestling was at its hottest in the late 90s and whatnot. But at least I can say WCW and Bischoff did, you know, go to toe-to-toe to -toe WWF. Like, Tony, like, who are you really beating right now? Like, y'all barely can crack a million as it is already. And like I said, it's so much stuff to go about what he said, and going back and forth, and the people responding to him, and, you know, gender, man, I, I gotta give him credit, too, just even coming back, saying, who the fuck is Hook, and just, like, deleted right after, I thought that was hilarious, so, to Tony, man, I know a lot of people say you want to feel bad for Tony, but it's hard to feel bad for him, in a way, when he brings this on his own, okay, this guy has to know what he was doing, like, he brings this to himself, he sets himself up, and puts himself in these situations, so, Tony has nobody to blame, really, but himself. And I, I just think it's hilarious, okay? This whole back-and-forth Twitter thing. It's like, Tony gonna be Tony. He shouldn't be doing this. He is the owner of a company. He's supposed to be running this show, but you got time to get on Twitter and go back. And, like, he must have something against Eric Bischoff, because it's like it's like a contest of, like, who's better between him and Bischoff. Like, he talks about WCW at the time, uh, drawing, what, higher ticket sales than them. And it's like, you really want to keep going back and forth with Bishop? Because, like, I feel like he just likes doing that for some reason. So, I feel like he has something against Eric Bishop. Because it's not the first time this has happened. But still, like, why do you keep going back and forth with him? Like, re really think about it. So, like I said, I don't have... I'm not going to go into too much detail of it. I just think Tony, once again, to make himself look like a fool. That's basically what he did. Again. And he got clowned. He got cooked. He got destroyed. However you want to put this. The dude literally was getting killed out there yesterday. So, he brought on himself. That's all I can really say from that. But, let's move on into the actual show for Dynamite. Uh, Daily's Place, we do kick it off with um, Hangman Page versus Claudio Castanoli. A very competitive match to kick off the show. Um, I guess they're trying to get Hangman back into the title picture, or for some reason getting Swerve again, I don't know, but why do they keep going towards that, I have no idea why. But, I thought it was a good match. Hangman ended up picking up the win, I figured Hangman was gonna win anyways, given that he is kinda after the people that attacked him, which, uh, you know, he hasn't really, but keep going after Swerve, and I guess going after Joe for the world title, so, um, a, a good match though, I will say that. 
Uh, I know they were hyping up a lot of... Um, I know this, this show was kind of a tribute to Brody Lee also, given they kept saying it's the greatest TNT champion in history. And his time in um, AEW, which wasn't really long, but most of it was during uh, in Daly's place during the pandemic era. And I guess it's going to be two different eight-person tags, an eight-man tag and an eight-women tag of two of his hand-picked people, which is Preston Vance, that was 10, and Anna J. Honestly, it was a random eight-man. It was a random eight-person tag matches that happened, okay? Which I couldn't really care much about, and it kind of came and it went. Uh, one thing I thought was kind of funny, I don't know if it was Excalibur or something, but he said something stupid like, what, Preston Vance was with Mick Carter, now he's a main event guy. I'm like, what? Uh, like, what are you talking about? But it was Edge... Orange Cassidy, Dustin Rhodes, and um, Preston Vance versus um, the Gates of Agony, Brian Cage, and um, Lance Archer, and Jake Roberts, who randomly appear back on the show again because they disappear every other three months or two. The last time I think that these guys were even on TV was what? When it was Collision? And they were with the Righteous? And I thought that was going to be a group, but... That just ended up going away like it was nothing. Justin Roberts should never do Edge's intro again, saying rated superstar, superstar, superstar. It's bad. It's corny. If you're not going to do it right, don't say it all. Or if you're not going to even try to be Tony Chimmel or at least hire and bring, bring him in, don't do that. Don't Just don't do it. That is lame and that is stupid. I said this before. Justin Roberts should stop doing that intro for Edge. It's corny. All right? It's very bad. I don't have much to say much about this um, eight-man tag. Um... All I know is that, and I swear they missed the finish on camera, Vance had like a discus lariat on Bishop Khan and won. So like I said, this is more about tribute to Brody Lee and, um, you know, Vance was like his handpicked person. Uh, the Gun Club and the Bullet Club, or my bad, Bullet Club Gold and the Acclaim were in the back talking about a super faction, Bang Bang Scissor Gang. I have no idea where that's going. Samoa Joe, the new AEW World Champion, stepped out. Fans chanted, uh, you know, thank you, Joe. And uh, there's no thanks needed. It was destined to happen. We're going to make some changes to this world title, okay? So, potential challengers, you're not going to come out whine and cry on the microphone or go complain on the internet with your little whole-ass comments. Um, basically, if you got the, you know, challengers, you got the record and the reputation, and I guess you got to go to some championship committee, you will get a shot at the AEW World Title so I can beat you up in front of everybody. Swerve came out then, um, basically, he wanted a title shot. Hangman wanted one saying, you know, he beat Moxie in a Texas death match, and the, the, what, the elite being back and all of that stuff, and... Now he wants the AEW World Title. He kept looking at uh, Swerve, though. Listen, I don't want to see Swerve versus Hangman again. I don't know why we need to even continue this. If it goes into a triple threat for the World Title, then okay. But I don't need to see Swerve versus Hangman anymore. Swerve actually get going for the title, uh, given he has the wins. Hangman's kind of lost in the past few matches. I get what he said out there, but it's like, dude, you lost to Swerve like two times in a row. So what makes you in any position to be asking for a World Title shot right now? Next thing you know, Hook comes out then. Um, I should be saying he should be thanking Tony in his Twitter rant since he defended him to the death, but he did call him out on collision, held up the FTW belt. I thought it was funny he had the like a bat signal up there that said the it was like hook like it was like the bat signal. They called it the hooks the hook signal. So, you know, I, I don't mind it that much given at least Hook has a lot of wins. I feel like he's just kinda of been in and out lately and they kinda of put him with the clown squad and whatnot, but it's not like he's going to beat Samoa Joe, so we'll, we'll see what happens, but, um, you know, at least Hook just came out, he said next week, and that was it, so there you go. Um, right after that, I know they had Tony Storm in the back, talking, uh, what about Mariah May and Deanna Perazzo, and kept mispronouncing her name, so we'll see where that goes. Ricky Starks went against Sammy Guevara, not much to say about this, um, Sammy won inside cradle, uh, Big Bill attacked him, because they will be facing Chris Jericho, and, um, Sammy Guevara this Saturday on Battle of the Belts of the Titles. Jericho came out, and they kept Judas playing, okay? So you didn't hear any NDA chants of booing and whatnot. So I kind of get what they did here. I actually thought they would have Jericho kind of off TV for a minute until they get this whole thing settled. But here's the thing. Like I said before, it's very vague, okay? It's just going off some dirt sheet writer, which, by, by the way, apparently that dude is backtracking out of what I've heard. So, um... 
now he's changing up a little bit of his story um, after that, after you kind of claimed all this stuff about Jericho. But still, it's like I said before, where's the evidence? Where's the proof? We haven't really heard nothing at this point, but knowing by fans and the internet and, the, you know, the court of public opinion or the Twitter community and whatnot, they believe anything at face value without actually, you know, looking for evidence or more information to come out. That's why I was like, I'll just wait. I'm not going to pick any side uh, right now. I think Tony probably should have handled it better in the media scrum and answer that instead of wearing that hat and glasses and saying we're the safest wrestling company in the world and whatnot. But still, it's not like, it's like I said, like I said before in the last video, what Jericho apparently what made a pass. We don't really know much about that. Like I said, it's very vague. We don't know enough information, but it's just funny when fans believe anything on the internet and at face value. Oh, he's an abuser. He's this, but where's the proof? Where's the evidence? And it's like I said before, it's more about guilty until proven innocent than innocent until proven guilty. So, yeah, and people are actually still saying Judas out there and were trying to high-five Jericho. So I don't think everybody was really against him all the way. But I get why they kept his music playing throughout that whole segment, though. So, there you go. But like I said, it's not like nothing. It's not like some charges have been made or proof is out there. So, yeah, nothing has happened. So that's all I can really say about that. But, yeah, the only other thing I can say is what the Houseman dude is apparently backtracking his story. So, whatever. Um, eight woman tag: Thunder Rosa, Chris Statlander, Willow Nightingale, Anna J versus Julie Hart, Sky Blue, Soraya, and Ruby. I don't have much to say about this. This is mostly about getting Brody Lee's protege over. Anna J won with the Queen Slayer, choked out Sky Blue. That's it. There's really not anything much to say about this. This tag match came and it went. Boom. Let's move on. A lot of cake though. But, um, moving on, though, um, I know Willie Yuta talked about Eddie Kingston, so I guess she's coming after him. Roderick Strong went against Brian Keefe. Uh, I know the rest of the Undisputed Kingdom was out there. Adam Cole was on the microphone then, basically trying to get this, um, you know, get this whole Undisputed Kingdom thing over, you know, putting over, uh, the Kingdom and Roddy and, um, Wartlow, which still makes no sense for him to be in this whole, uh, group. Uh, like I said before, he said, we're going to take the AEW world title. It's kind of just hard to do this when Cole is just, you know, sitting down and he's hurt. So he really can't do nothing right now. So Cole is doing his best on the microphone to get this over. Deanna Perrazzo is in the back. Basically says she's going to make her air debut this Saturday. Her in-ring debut on AEW Collision. And Red Velvet says she's making her debut. So they're going to be facing each other this um Saturday. So that'll be a good match. Um... In the main event, though, we had Sting and Darby Allen with Ric Flair out there going against Kanosuke Takeshita and Powerhouse Hob, non Callis Tornado Tag Match. I got to say, this was a rough match, given it was all over the place and, you know, everybody's brawling throughout the, the whole building. Flair's getting in there doing some chops, which, you know, Hobbs no-sold. You know, Sting and Darby, which, by the way, when they threw Darby and, like, wheelbarrowed him and threw him, I got to say, that was pretty rough. He landed into the ropes, um... But yeah, Darby and Sting coming back. Uh, Darby doing a coffin drop off of like the stage, which uh, to catch the caught him, kind of barely, but he caught him regardless. Got a holy shit chant. By the way, Jim Ross was on commentary too, so it was good to hear him. Um, but you know, after that, Hobbs picked up Sting, and they I guess he was carrying him somewhere, but Sting got out of it, hit the Scorpion Death Drop through two tables, but ended up being one table. I am the table. Which well, it took a minute for Sting to get up, to be honest, because that was a hard fall he took. So hopefully he didn't hurt himself, but he got right back up, so he was okay. But we got to get some type of crazy Sting spot. But then Tony Schiavone got in the ring and said, uh, you know, uh, who's going to be Sting's final opponent at uh, Revolution? Which I think it would be Sting versus Darby, or maybe they'd be going after the tag titles since Sting and Darby don't lose to anybody. But the Young Bucks came out, and all they really did was just have some new mustaches. I honestly started laughing. When I saw this, so this is going to be Sting's last match, huh? Him and Darby versus the Young Bucks. I started laughing. Because, maybe because, you know, it's Florida. It's um, Daly's Place. It's AEW home base. Maybe the people care. But I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Anybody that knows me, they know I, I don't care. And I don't think anybody cared when the last time we saw the Young Bucks back at full gear. So... 
Am I really excited to see them versus Sting and Darby? Not really. I'm sure it could be a good match, depending on how it goes. But um, I just started laughing the minute I saw the Young Bucks. I'm like, this is who we got for Sting? This is who we got for Sting? This is who we got? All right. All right. I, I guess we got to go with it. So I, I don't I don't know. All right. I, I have no idea. But, yeah, they came out. They looked at Sting and Darby. So, yeah, I guess they'll face them in Revolution when that happens. So, I don't I don't know. These guys have been off TV for, like, a few months anyways. And they come back with mustaches now. So, I have no idea where this is going to go. I don't. Overall, I thought Dynamite was okay. All right. I'm sure most everybody been talking about AW mostly due to Tony's Twitter tirade yesterday. But the show was okay. And once again, I'm sure people thought Mercedes was going to show up tonight, but what what happened? What happened? People on the internet have been saying it was going to happen, but it didn't happen, so I don't know. I still think she's coming at the Rumble, though, so it is what it is. Uh, but, yeah, that's all I really got to say about the show tonight. Comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at HoodNight890. I'm out of here. See y'all then. Peace out.